Hey guys, it's Ryan here from Explained, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be watching a sports war drama set during the Second World War titled Escape to Victory, which was directed by John Hudson and released in 1981. The plot of the movie follows a ragtag group of prisoners of war who have come together to create a soccer team and play against the national soccer team of Germany while one of them is plotting to escape. So let's get started. Turn on the subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts in a German World War II prison camp as German soldiers along with their guard dogs patrol the facility. Attempting to escape, a prisoner is seen crawling around the grounds doing his best to remain out of sight. He makes his way to the perimeter fence and uses a set of wire cutters to create an opening for himself. Unfortunately for the man, one of the guard dogs hears him and attacks while barking and alerting the rest of the infantry. The base alarm sounds as the man is trapped by the barbed wire before the searchlights spot him and the German guards gun him down. The opening scene highlights the inherent dangers faced by prisoners of war when they tried to escape from German prison camps. The next day, a group of British POWs, which consist of the senior British officer, Colonel Waldron, the head of the Intelligence Committee, Major Rose, and Wing Commander Sherlock, meet with a regiment of German soldiers, including Major Karl von Steiner. Seeing delegates from the Red Cross with the regiment, Colonel Waldron assumes they're there to investigate the shooting of the POW that attempted to escape the night before. But the leader of the regiment dismisses his statement by saying the shooting was an accident, and the Red Cross delegates are simply there to see that the POWs are being treated well according to the requirements of the Geneva Convention. As they're walking through the camp, Major von Steiner notices the group of POWs playing a game of soccer. Then one of the POWs, Captain Robert Hatch, an American, accidentally kicks the ball towards Major von Steiner. When Hatch asks for the ball, von Steiner shows him his advanced dribbling skills before kicking the ball to Captain Joel Colby. The German soldier and the British POW have a friendly conversation where von Steiner points out that he knows Colby used to play for West Ham United in England. At night, Hatch takes notes of the vehicle that transports an escort from the German quarters before going to play a game of cards with the British POWs. He seems to be planning an escape mission of his own. Colonel Waldron asks Captain Colby what he was discussing earlier with Major von Steiner, but Colby brushes it off as the radio announces that the German army is trying to divert attention from their losses in North Africa and their reported inhumane treatment of Eastern European prisoners. Major Rose also highlights that von Steiner used to play for the German national soccer team. The next day, Major von Steiner approaches Captain Colby with the idea to have Colby's group of POWs play against a German team from a nearby base in a friendly soccer game. Colby's reluctant at first and offers von Steiner a set of special conditions for him to agree to the proposal. His conditions are, the POW team must be properly fed with meat and vegetables as well as the occasional beer and they must also be allowed to live in the same living quarters. Colby also requires that his players be provided with the right training equipment and playing gear. Major von Steiner agrees to the captain's request and promises to forward them to his commander and the German high command. Elsewhere in the prison camp, Captain Hatch approaches the POW committee with the odd escape plan he's been working on for approval. The plan involves Hatch escaping through the roof of the shower building while everyone showers. Colonel Waldron says he'll consider the hilarious plan before it's crazy enough to work. Later on, Captain Colby begins picking players for his team with Hatch trying to join the squad because being part of the POW soccer team is an integral part of his escape plan. The only problem is Hatch is too accustomed to American football, making him terrible at soccer. He even resorts to tackling the players he's playing with when things don't go his way. Colby then has a meeting with Colonel Waldron and the Colonel suggests the captain use the game as an opportunity for him and his teammates to escape. But Colby isn't interested because of the inherent dangers POWs face when trying to escape. He does not want to risk the lives of his men. At the German High Command, the commandant is formed with Major von Steiner's idea and Colby's request and decides to use the soccer match as a propaganda vehicle for the German army. He agrees with Colby's request and orders the match to be played between the POWs and the German national soccer team. For the commandant, the soccer team is an opportunity to divert attention from their recent losses. Back at the prison camp, Captain Patch fails to make the team again as Colby discovers a talented soccer player from Brazil, Luis Fernandez. Later on, Hatch observes another guard's routine when Wing Commander Sherlock informs him that the POW committee has approved his escape plan and he now needs to go see the forger to get his travel documents. 
Soon after, Captain Colby is escorted off the camp to meet with Major von Steiner. The Major informs him that their once friendly football match has been co-opted by the German High Command, meaning Colby's POW team will now have to play against the German national team in a public game in France. Seeing that the match is now being used as propaganda for the German army, Captain Colby requests players from other POW camps as well as players from Eastern European nations that are trapped in German labor camps. The Germans agree, thinking there's no way the POWs can win against their national team. At the prison camp, Hatch meets with the forger to have his picture taken for his forged travel documents. When he leaves the forger's office, he sees a new set of patrol guards and realizes the guards he's been watching have been assigned to Colby's soccer team, completely jeopardizing his plan. As Captain Colby introduces his players to their new living quarters, Hatch enters and declares that he'll be joining the team as a trainer. At first, the captain refuses, but he finally agrees to Hatch joining the team when the American explains that the captain's soccer match has disrupted his escape. Soon after that, Captain Colby gets the international players from other POW camps he's requested from Major von Steiner, and the newly formed team of Allied players get to work, training hard for their upcoming match against the German national team. It's during one of these training sessions that Colby realizes how good Hatch can be as a goalkeeper given his experience with American football. Things are beginning to look up for Colby and his team, but the arrival of the Eastern Europeans from the German labor camps changes everything. Seeing the starved and abused players, Colonel Waldron tells Colby that the match is nothing more than a propaganda ploy by the German army. The colonel then orders Colby to immediately cancel the match and rather think of an escape plan for his players or face a court-martial when the war ends. Colby informs the players of the colonel's orders, but they insist on playing the match. The colonel then meets with Hatch and tells him that he needs to go through France during his escape so the French resistance can aid in the soccer team's escape. Hatch agrees and later on that night, he escapes through the showers as planned by climbing through the roof as everyone else showers below him. He cunningly makes his way off the prison camp by avoiding all the guards and their patrol dogs before sneaking onto the escort's vehicle, the same vehicle he was watching at the beginning of the film. The rest of the POWs hilariously cover for Hatch by using a mannequin as his replacement during roll call. When Hatch gets to France, he meets with four members of the French resistance, Victor, Claude, René, and André the leader. André informs Hatch that he's reluctant to aid in the soccer team's escape because that might lead to a shootout in the streets, but Victor says there might be a way to help using the city sewer system. The three men inform Hatch that they'll need some time to come up with a feasible escape plan and he should spend the night at Renee's home while they do so. Hatch agrees and ends up spending the night at Renee's, a resistance fighter who refuses to learn anything about him because she's worried he'll be killed soon. To ease her concerns, Renee informs her that he grew up an orphan and with no one or nothing to lose, so she shouldn't worry about him. The following day, while exploring sewers below the city, Andre, Victor, and Claude discover a foundation pipe that connects to the stadium, meaning they might be able to dig into the structure's showers. Later that night, the resistance fighters reveal their plan to help the POWs escape during the halftime break of the soccer game. They'll do so by going into the sewer below the city and digging into the shower room of the stadium. Then, during the halftime break, the POW team will sneak out of the stadium using the tunnel the resistance will dig for them before going through the sewer system of the city to a safe destination. Unfortunately for Hatch, they don't have a man on the inside who can inform the POWs of their plan, so they'll need to get him captured again and inform Colby's men of the plan from the inside. With no one able to inform the POWs of the French resistance plan, Hatch reluctantly agrees to get captured again and sent back to the prison camp he escaped from. But when he arrives at the camp, Hatch is quickly sent into solitary confinement as punishment and is unable to tell the team. The only thing he can do is make a mercury hand signal which Major Rose correctly reads as Hatch having an important message for him. Because of this, Colonel Waldron asks Captain Colby to aid in the American's release, and the captain does so by telling Major von Steiner that he's going to need Hatch during the soccer game because his first goalkeeper has broken his arm. Given Captain Hatch's recent escape, Major von Steiner begrudgingly agrees to the request, but he requires that Captain Colby provide evidence of his claim by having the prison's camp doctor confirm the first-choice goalkeeper has truly broken his arm. This leaves Captain Colby with no choice but to break his goalie's arm. Hatch is released and joins the POW team as their new goalkeeper before traveling with them to the soccer stadium in France.
but he's still unsure of some of the basic rules in soccer. So while in training, he asked Captain Colby where he, as the goalkeeper, should stand when there's a corner kick. Captain Colby can only laugh at the basic soccer question coming from the first time goalie who's about to play against the German national team. The day of the match arrives as the French resistance members finalize their preparations for the team's escape while the German troops secure the stadium for the commandant and the German high command. The civilian crowd is also forced into the stadium by the German military to witness the game between the POWs and the German national team, a game that's intended to be nothing more than a spectacle of planned propaganda to motivate the German army. The game begins and the first half of the match goes according to plan for the German high command. They watch as the German national team scores four unanswered goals while being aided by the lopsided favoritism of the biased referee. The Germans also injure the talented Luis Fernandez, who's clearly the best player in Captain Colby's squad. In a smart strategic move by the Germans, and it leaves the POWs playing with a man short. But a goal from Colby's team inspires the POWs that there may be a way to beat the Germans, as they go into the halftime break trailing with a three-goal deficit. During the halftime break, the French resistance successfully tunnel into the stadium showers room and offer the POWs a way out. But Colby's team senses a shifting tide from the goal they scored and decides against escaping. Hatch wants to leave, but Fernandez persuades him to stay by telling him that running away now would mean that they've lost more than just a game of soccer to the Germans, but that they've lost their pride as men and soldiers. To the shock of the POW committee, especially Colonel Waldron, Colby's ragtag team of prisoners of war return to the pitch to play the second half of the match and they do so with a sense of pride and determination that results in two quick goals before a stunning equalizer from Fernandez that leaves the score at an even four goals per team. The unexpected turn of events inspire the French crowd to overwhelmingly side with the POWs and also sway Colonel Waldron and the rest of the POW committee to finally start supporting Colby's squad, a team that represents all POWs and the Allied powers as a whole to the utter dissatisfaction of the commandant as well as the rest of the German high command, the game of soccer that was intended to be nothing more than a propaganda exercise for their army has now turned into a source of motivation for the allied troops. But unfortunately for the crowd and the POWs, the German national team is awarded a penalty in the last minute of the match. It's now up to Hatch, the inexperienced goalkeeper who grew up playing American football to save the penalty from a professional soccer player and stop the German propaganda effort. Surprising everyone, including himself, Hatch manages to save the penalty and the match between the POWs and the German national team ends as a four-all draw. The crowd goes crazy and rushes onto the pitch as the German soldiers lose control of them. This allows Colby's team to escape with the crowd while stopping the German propaganda effort from succeeding. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and also comment down your thoughts on the movie. And before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.